They say the legends of the past are meant to teach and Let's go for a uh, five minute game. The Yubel 2200 blitz from from uh, Germany. Got ourselves a Sicilian of the classical sort. Um, wow, I thought it was going to go for the Night Earth. Okay. You want a dragon, sir? You can have, you can have your dragon. I'm not afraid. I am a little bit afraid, but not that afraid. A6? Usually when people play kind of Dragodorf style, a dragon and knight of hybrid, they don't castle that early because this A6, B5, you know, bishop b7, knight knight d7, and so on. All that uh, that whole setup is a little bit slow. And when you castle kingside, usually you're going to get slaughtered pretty quickly with um, g4, h4, and bishop g h6, and so on. And this is not, this is not even about the opponent that you're you're playing like the thing that makes the dragon sort of a difficult opening for for black to play is that everybody knows or at least everybody who's uh played e4 at some point in their life everybody just knows how to attack you just you just push on the on the king side um and this makes the dragon a very difficult opening to play as black, but a more difficult, but but an easier opening to to play as white. And you can see here, um, he's never got going on the queen side, and already he's getting he's getting mated. I think pretty shortly, and unless he he finds some some brilliant defense, so it's, it's really it's really not an opening um, that you want to play play by, by hand because uh, people know what to do as white and most of the time you're just gonna you're just gonna get slaughtered um, basically okay um yeah yeah sorry dude that was that was just a bad um bad opening choice i'm, I'm sure my my opponent is usually a lot better than than uh, this but um you gotta you just i i think you just can't play play this way when you play the 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 dragon
Hey guys, Super Horror Bro Mike here, and in today's video we take a look at a rundown of the scariest ghost girl encounters gaming has to offer. But why ghost girls in particular? Well, quite simply, female ghosts are a far more common trope within the horror genre than their male counterparts, perhaps due to the success of movies such as The Grudge and The Ring. So with that said, let's dive into a look at the most bone-chilling ghost encounters gaming has to offer. For some reason, children often make for the spookiest ghosts of all, and this is one of the many reasons why Alma from First Person Shooter Horror Trilogy Fear takes a rightful place on today's rundown. Born into the care of sinister corporation Armacam Technology, Alma had a miserable childhood subjected to rigorous testing due to her mysterious psychic abilities. What's worse, it was her father who volunteered her for the tests as head of Armacam. Eventually, when Alma's powers grew too strong to control, she was put into a coma at the age of eight and isolated in a vault away from human contact, and led to her father removing her from life support and her spirit to then haunt the now abandoned Armacam facility. In the game, she often shows up right before the player's eyes when they least expect it, and has the ability to cause soldiers to spontaneously combust in a shower of gore. She appears in both the form of this young girl and also as a young adult. Both forms are pretty creepy and you never know when she'll show up next. Alma's tragic and morbid backstory make her a truly chilling apparition. While its cartoonish looks paint the picture of a family-friendly video game, Spooky's Jump Scare Mansion is full of grotesque sights and sounds and some legitimately terrifying moments. We find ourselves trapped in an old mansion that also served as a research laboratory for a long list of monstrous specimens. One of these is a ghost girl simply known as Specimen 4. We first discover her while exploring a floor of a mansion designed to look like a school. As we navigate its claustrophobic classrooms, the shadows of other spirits are illuminated by our flashlight, sitting in the chairs and silently judging us. However, it's when Specimen 4 shows up that things really become scary. High-pitched, panic-inducing music begins to play out as she emerges from the darkness. If we fail to escape Specimen 4, she will swallow us up whole. There even exists a scarier version of Specimen 4 in the game's endless mode. She now has multiple limbs growing from her back, and her mouth is stretched out and full of sharp, jagged teeth. On the subject of creepy schoolgirls, our next subject also falls into this category. Her name is Agatha, and her appearance is pretty horrifying. Agatha has long arms full of scars and burn marks, and at the end of these arms are long, claw-like fingers. She wears a rictus grin at all times as she taunts us through the halls of her schoolhouse. Agatha is part of a wide cast of demonic entities found within the game Dark Deception, a Maze Runner horror game which uses the classic Pac-Man formula. In order to escape from her, we must collect all soul shards placed around her lair, and then make a desperate bid for the exit upon doing so. Agatha plays hide and seek with us through these halls, and while it seems that all she wants to do is play, you wouldn't want to get caught by this particular playmate. Home Sweet Home is a horror game based around Thai traditions and horror folklore. We play the role of a man who awakens in a strange room with no memory of how he arrived there. As the cryptic story unfolds, various ghosts and spirits based around Thai mythology show up to give us a scare and hinder our progress. The scariest of these is a teenage girl covered in blood who has been cursed in death because she attempted to curse others with black magic when she was alive. Her black magic rituals failed, and now she haunts the afterlife, spewing up blood and nails and looking for new souls to torment. <coughs> she 
she can even emerge from pools of blood on the floor and crawl out of the very walls around us. She staggers about, whispering in a hoarse, strained voice as she hunts us down. What the fuck is this? The Falling Woman appears in Fatal Frame 2, a game where we must take photographs of ghosts in order to dispel them. Her name comes from the manner in which she died, throwing herself from the top floor of this house and crashing into the floor at the bottom of this stairwell. We see her fall right before our eyes in a twisted mess. This gruesome sight, along with her tortured screaming and the hair-raising music accompanying this scene, makes for one of the most shocking ghost girl encounters in this video. Silent Hill 4 tells the story of Henry Townsend, who begins investigating the murders of serial killer Walter Sullivan. Many of Walter's victims haunt Henry both in his apartment and the nightmarish overworld he journeys into each night. One of these victims is Cynthia Velequez. After witnessing Cynthia's death, Henry discovers her decomposing corpse in the subway later on in the story. What happens next is truly horrifying. Now Cynthia's ghost floats around and emerges from holes in the wall, hunting Henry through this subway every step of the way. She even appears inside Henry's apartment from time to time to give him a scare. Of Silent Hill 4's many ghosts, Cynthia is surely one of the creepiest. Continuing with the subway theme, our next ghost girl inhabits such an environment. The ghost of Jane Espitraviti appears in PS1-styled horror game Lost in Vivo. We find a pair of shoes neatly placed beside the train track this tormented soul stepped onto when she decided to end her life. We hear the ghostly sound of her scream as the train hits her body in-game. Now her soul haunts the dimly lit corridors of this subway station. However, while Jane haunts us in this horrifyingly disfigured form for most of our time in these tunnels, she eventually saves us from dying in a similar manner to her by stopping a train from hitting us. At this point she appears as a kinder apparition in a more normal human form. One of the few ghosts on this list who sought redemption for her sins. It seems only appropriate a game based on one of the most terrifying ghost movies of all time would make the list. Due on the Grudge is labelled as a haunted house simulator and for good reason. While exploring a variety of different locations, including hospitals, factories and the aforementioned haunted house, we are stalked by the cursed spirit of Kiyako Seiki. Kiyako was killed by her jealous husband, who believed she was cheating on him with their son's school teacher. He snapped her neck and bundled her body in a bag stashed in the attic. Kiyako now haunts those exposed to the curse, which is where the game picks up. We hear a terrifying croaking sound when she is near, a result of her throat being snapped by her vengeful husband. The grudge spirit appears in the most unexpected of places, as a reflection in a mirror or as hair bleeding out from underneath a cubicle door. We must be alert and ready for her to appear at any time. Her pale, wide-eyed appearance is deeply unsettling and makes for a ghost girl encounter unlike any other. Much like Fatal Frame before it, Dreadout is a game which centres around defeating malicious spirits using a camera phone. There are many horrifying ghosts to encounter throughout this schoolgirl's journey, but one of the most terrifying is this giant ghost known as Demi Lorong, who appears in an endless corridor in the middle of the game. We can only escape her by accessing a hidden door, and if we fail to discover this door in due time, Lorong catches up with us. Both her appearance and the inhuman sound she makes are pure nightmare fuel.
Our next ghost girl isn't actually from a conventional video game at all, but rather an interactive web browser experience. This infamous urban legend tells the story of a Korean schoolgirl walking home alone one evening who encounters another lone woman staggering up the street ahead of her. As she approaches, the schoolgirl realises this strange woman is crippled, her body twisted and broken. The girl begins to back away, but it's too late. She encounters the terrifying Bong Chong Dong ghost. What made this story and the ghost encounter so scary was the way the web page managed to take control of the user's computer. And just as they reached the moment where it's too late for the girl to turn back, the reader also discovered they couldn't turn back either. A jump scare leaping out of the screen toward them. The ghost of this woman asks where her baby is and when she is directed off by the terrified schoolgirl, she seems to disappear, only to reappear moments later when her search is fruitless. <coughs> the website went viral and this particular urban legend is still spoken of today as one of the scariest games available on the internet. In Pacify, we investigate a grimy old house, haunted by the spirit of a young girl who chillingly stares at us as we search for nine dolls. It is only by burning these dolls that we can banish the spirits of this girl and lay her to rest. However, the longer we explore the house, the more aggressive this demon child becomes, eventually wailing and screaming as she chases us from room to room in a maniacal rampage. The fact there is little backstory to this girl makes her solemn appearance all the more terrifying, and she makes for one of the most unsettling ghost encounters on this list. White Day is a paranormal investigation experience where we assume the role of a student trapped inside a haunted school after hours. There are many, many horrifying apparitions to be found within the walls of this school. However, for the sake of this video, we must focus on just one, and by far the creepiest must be the house mistress. While alive, this woman was referred to as the tiger due to the punishment she would dish out to her students, such as cutting off the hair of female students with a pair of scissors. Her ghost retains this creepy character trait as she appears behind the player when we gaze into this mirror in the girl's bathroom. <laughs> Upon exiting the bathroom, a second jump scare will trigger. There's something unnerving about the sound of those scissors, snipping over and over and over, and knowing if we hear them, this terrifying teacher is nearby and ready to attack. <coughs> PT is known to be one of the scariest game experiences of all time, which is pretty crazy considering it was only a concept demo rather than a full-blown game. One of the all-time scariest ghost girls haunts its halls. Her name is Lisa, an inhumanly tall, smiling ghoul with a bullet hole in her eye where her drunk husband shot her in a fit of rage. As we explore a never-ending loop through the hallway of an old house, Lisa will stalk us at every turn, making her presence known with a chilling moan. She appears in the most unlikely of places, sometimes directly behind us, other times on a balcony above, or at others outside the house watching through the windows as we explore. As mentioned earlier, PT is renowned for its thick atmosphere of dread, an atmosphere which has stopped many players from reaching its end. This is largely due to Lisa and her nightmarish guise. As you can see, she earns her place at the top of today's rundown of the scariest ghost girls in video games. I hope you did enjoy this video, and if you did, remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more horror related content. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next one.
a large anomalous mass of rock that has broken away and risen above the surrounding terrain.
Seek fluid intake.
Music is so nice. Oh, oh. What's that you're working on? Just a sketch. It might be a problem, baby. Oh, actually, eat the food and drink the water. Full up, full up. Let's go. Fuck you. All right, what did this thing say? For her or anyone else? It'll enable me to get around in there quicker. And better and faster and stronger. So let's equip uh, this hydrochloric acid. Okay. Maximum depth range. Nice. Damage imminent. Any diamonds? Diamonds? Anybody? Anybody? Any takers? Any diamond takers? Warning. Thirty seconds of oxygen remaining. Yeah! 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 Can I take out the mineral thing? Is there any diamonds nearby? No. I need diamonds. Diamonds are a Jack's best friend. Oh, I can actually get pretty close. Warning. Maximum depth reach. Nice! All damage imminent.
astronautical Soltrans go vessel nearby. Vessel name, Mercury 2. Inoperative. Seek fluid intake. New creature discovered.
aboard captain
seek fluid intake. aboard captain white vital signs stable Rising.
Dangerous weather approaching. Seek shelter.
Welcome aboard, Captain.
Any diamonds? Diamonds? Anybody? Anybody? Any takers? Any diamond takers? Warning. Passing 200 meters. Swim charge Oxygen fins. Efficiency greatly decreased. Some charge fins are nice. Hydrochloric acid? Okay. Oh. Warning. Oh, I am running out of oxygen real fast down here. Shit. Oh, glow whale. Oh, scary. Oh. oh, man, I want to do stuff here. Okay, let's put it down. Let's put down a beacon. Uh, edit beacon name. Uh, Omega base. Okay, I'm gonna go look for... Can I make a rebreather? I can make a better oxygen tank. Um... Oxygen tank. Oxygen tank. Yeah, silver, glass, titanium. Okay, I think I have a bunch of that stuff. Okay, nice. Good progression, though. Good exploration. Ow! I can make a floating air pump. I just need lots and lots and lots of titanium. That might be nice. Just build it all the way down. Yeah, we could do that. That should be what I work on. So if I can build that, then I can just have oxygen like go down into the base. Basically. <laughs> oh god, there's one of them here. Uh-huh, there's two of them here! Why are you here? Oh, everything in the ocean wants to kill you! The ocean is a terrifying place, full of misery! And people willingly go into it for fun? These are fucking morons! Everything's fine. Everything's fine. I just need to get some silver. And, like, gold and stuff. But it's all fine. There's nothing here that's gonna kill you. <laughs> okay, high capacity O2 tank. Easy. That wasn't too much of a hassle. Oh, so much oxygen now. 135. That's so much nicer. Hell yeah. Um, I can un pin you now. Is that enough pipes? Is that enough? Hmm. Yeah, you can never be too sure. Easy, easy. Just a kilometer away. Get over there. Pump some air down into this deep dark ocean. And then we're money, baby. Oh, 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 oh. oh god, so much further away than I think. Warning, passing 100 meters. Oxygen Ooh, a efficiency. Battery? Hell yeah. A tech control room. Food. Inventory full. Ah, dickies. Yeah, screw it. Use the med kit. Too many pipes on me. Logs and communication. Okay. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna have to read you back in my thing. Okay. What part is this? It's just a sea truck fragment. Water. Oh, oh. Actually, eat the food. And drink the water. Full up! Full up! Let's go! Poke chill! Alright, what did this thing say? We're getting closer. I know the control room. Wait, you know what? Let's let's do this. We're getting closer. I know the control room will change the process of base building. It contains all the information you need in a singular place. Energy delegation for low sunlight areas, build layout, structural information. Is this new? We're leaps and bounds away from V1, which literally just rolled to the bottom of the ocean. Even on flat ground, rapid implosion is supposed to be painless. I hope that's true. Definitely a better way to go than the electrical fire in V5.7. Poor way to go. Nasty way to go. 
Super unfortunate radio call to overhear. Jasmine was the latest worker that volunteered to test the control room for hazard pay, of course. She was on the radio examining some information panels when she experienced rapid depressurization due to a hull breach. Apparently, the panels were welded poorly and blew a hole in the wall. So no hazard pay for her, or anyone else for that matter. At least she didn't suffer. This next build should have all the kinks ironed out. So we got a tech room thing? Control room. Operational hub for observing and managing habitat power, structural integrity, and aesthetic design. That is new. Or at least I've never used one. To have everything centralized in one place, that's cool. Um, ooh, depth upgrade three. Kyanite, nickel ore, yeah. So I need, I need upgrade one to be able to get to two and three. I just need enamel glass, though. Which is literally just finding diamonds. If I can find diamonds, I can get them. But I have no idea where diamonds are. So I should be able to just bring the air pumps all the way down. If I can get, like, an air supply right at the tip of this base, it'll enable me to get around in there quicker and better and faster and stronger. So let's equip uh, this. And drop you there. Nice. And then, isn't there like a max distance I can go with these before they stop working? Yeah. Like that. Nice. Oh, I think I made way too many. <laughs> well, we have a big distance to go, actually. Oh, now we're getting efficient. Now we're getting efficient. Maximum focus. Warning, passing 100 oh, meters. Shit. <laughs> Oxygen efficiency Whoops. decreased. Maximum efficiency! <laughs> this is way further down than I expected. I thought I made way too many pipes. Um, where's the entrance over here? Warning, 30 seconds of oxygen remaining. Ah, <laughs> that's not a problem, baby! Shit. It might be a problem, baby! You put them at an angle, they suddenly don't want to work. Oxygen. No, no, no! Just give me air! Oxygen. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God. This is tense! It's hard to do! Oxygen efficiency greatly decreased. It's okay. I have this, like, directly to the door now. Okay. Let's explore around with my scanner. Get some bulkheads. Because there's some really useful stuff down here. So I want to make sure I'm getting it all. And I'm not being rushed to do so. Okay. And now I can read these without worrying that my oxygen is going down. The key to total uninterrupted focus on what's important is the ability to unfocus on the unimportant. Okay. Uh, the ultimate goal of... Concentration is not to block out surrounding environments, but to maintain total focus in spite of them. They will be there. You must not only be So I want to make sure I'm getting it all. What am I reading? I'm not task being rushed to do so. Sort of multitask, now get ready for monotasking. I don't care. I want cool shit. Aromatherapy lamps. Stuff like that. And what did I get? Oh, I had it already. Composite plant box? Care about multitasking? A countertop? Hell yeah! Omega Lab was first breached by heavy impact. Perhaps from a sea track modified with some sort of battering implement. A localized explosive charge was then released and detonated from a distance. Lab equipment was damaged to the point of inoperability. And all live specimens were destroyed. No personnel was injured. Samples have been collected for analysis to determine whether any bacteria escaped. It is, however, unlikely. The heat of the charge should have boiled everything within a 10 meter radius. Go out the fucking door, please! Holy shit, that almost got me killed! Warning. 30 seconds of oxygen remaining. I'm sorry, lady, I barely un I barely listened to anything you were saying because I got so panicky towards the end. Holy crap, but well, we got a water filtration system. Huge. Oh, you're talking about this. 
We've studied the first Corral bacteria samples from the specimen. Results are promising. We were able to stimulate rapid multiplication of cells in a controlled environment, Nuclear resulting reactor. in the creation of several different mutations with potentially useful applications. Think of the possibilities. Life-saving treatments, genetic research. It could be a window to understand the evolution of life on this planet. The findings could move us forward by years. We recommend a wider study, using samples collected from a greater variety of sites around the original postules. We trust you will provide the necessary security to do so. The Leviathan site must be protected. Oh. The Leviathan site. Are you talking about the one in the ice? Oh, there's a bunch of uh, ribbon plants here. Oh, and grow beds. Fuck yeah! Fruit. Or plants, at least. Wait, can I make my own ribbon plants? Am I foolish? I was saying that in the last episode. I wish I could just, like, make my own in a farming bed. Have I been a silly billy all this time? It's not as unlikely as you'd think. Okay, we're getting some amazing stuff here. I challenged your spy pangling to a foot race earlier. Because you got tired of losing to me? Ouch. <laughs> what if I've been letting you win so I could see you smile? Cute. But I don't believe it. There are easier ways to make someone smile. Easier than losing a foot race? Oh, I think you're a woman with many talents. What are you implying? The artwork that appeared in my lab the other day? Oh, that. A study in Parkelian Red. I assume you had something to do with that. That depends. Do you like it? It's beautiful. Like the person who gave it to me. If I didn't know better, I'd say you were flirting with me. Do you know better? I don't know what I know anymore. Not when you're looking at me like that. Oh, cute. So it was... She was the lady that she found, not... What did I say? Fred? Um, that's kind of cute. Wish you were here. Hey, Tiger, I miss you a lot. And I can't wait for you... For both of our assignments to be over with. Delta R6 has been an amazing opportunity. I never tire of watching the sunrise and sunset over the black sands of the... The Charizard Desert. It's beautiful. The only way that it could be better is if you were here. Loving you across the stairs. Irie Ang... I don't know how to pronounce your name. Oh, uh, Danny's not here, I'm afraid. That's okay. It's you I wanted to see. What's that you're working on? Just a sketch for a piece I want to make. <sighs> I'm slacking off. Did I get everything? Don't tell the boss lady. <laughs> I won't. It's beautiful. What is it? I'm doing a series inspired by bacteria. Mutant beauty. Life, death, risk. You know, that kind of thing. What's this one? It looks like Barab, but Vin, is this a mutation? It's just an art project. You know you're doing that thing with your neck, like when you're trying to bluff an alien intruder. <sighs> All right, fine, fine. I'm padded line. Are you mutating Karab bacterium from the frozen Leviathan here in this lab? Please don't ask me any more questions. I don't think I need to. Damn. So they're still, uh, experimenting on the Kara, which is the infection that put the whole planet in lockdown before. Wait, this is before main Subnautica, right? Or is it after? I know it's on a different part of the planet, but I can't remember if it's before or after it. Somebody in the comments will help me. Because that, that's big implications then for... What's happening in this story? Are we seeing how it happened? Or are we seeing what happened like many, many, many years after? I think this might be years after. I did know at one point and now I just completely forget. Okay, we got some good stuff in there. A nuclear reactor fragment is big. I found a lab that looked like it had been sabotaged intentionally. The outside was mostly intact, and the equipment inside seemed like it might have been appropriate for bacteriology before a fire tornado ran through it. Is it somehow related to Sam's death? Who would have wanted to destroy the place? Hmm. Okay, it's getting more interesting. 
was kind of giving it shit or the last episode um unnecessarily because of it being different i do still wish they were british because i like the the sort of more varied accents um it was just pleasant to listen to not that this isn't but you know it's just it's a different change of pace it's nice to hear uh different accents and dialects throughout the game and I just wish they didn't change it. It might be a scheduling conflict, or it might be something got to do with the people involved and the voices or whatnot. There could be a myriad of different reasons why they change voice actors. Um, but the story's getting interesting now. It seems to be a lot more like... I don't, like people were living here more so than previous Subnautica. Because they were there, but you didn't really get to hear that many voices. This one is just way more voices. They put way more effort into uh, getting voice acting for most of this, which I really appreciate. Is that a piece that I have? Fuck, it's too close to that dude, though. Still need diamond. I don't know what region. Oh, God! Fuck, 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 fuck! Turn on and off the lights! That'll get him! Let me go, 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 let me go. Ah, fuck, he's right on me again. I need the speed boost upgrade. I don't want to lose my sea truck. Shit. That was so scary. Oh, I forgot to breathe. I leave, I leave. I know, this is your place. I leave, I'll go. Jesus, man! What a dick! Or am I the dick? Oh, it's nice to be back in safer waters. <sighs> Not having to worry about things killing you every five minutes. Okay, I need some water and I need some food. Come here! Come here, swimming food! Come here, peeper! The bitch! Got him! Oh yeah, now I have an extra battery. That's Welcome nice. I should take the batteries out of all of these. Uh, framed art? Right in the middle. <laughs> now, I'm, I'm gonna- I'm, I'll admit, I don't know much about art. But it seems like whoever drew this doesn't either. Oh my god, this antennae fruit Gives you five health, 16 food, and one water. It's all positives? You rarely ever get that in Subnautica. Usually there's some sort of dysfunction to it that's gonna, like, mess you up. Um, I put the ribbon plants away. I need to build some grow beds now. Uh, maybe they're on the habitat builder. Ooh! Yeah! Plant pots. No, I need exterior grow beds. I only need two titanium for those? Oh, mama! I want to build two of them, though, so I need one more titanium. This is going to be great! I think I can, like, make my own... Uh, I think I can make my own ribbon plants and my own... Let's you grow plants and vegetables, providing flavorful options for evading scurvy. Uh-huh. Plants? I forget how I grow things in this game. Let me try with this. Does, does that does that do anything? I don't know. I'm gonna have to look up about uh, planting and <laughs> growing stuff in this game again. <laughs> I don't remember a single thing. Man, I would love to have a water filtration system immediately, but I need aerogel for it. And I remember aerogel being a harder thing to get. Ooh, reactor rods. Uraninite crystals, glass, lead, titanium. If I do that, I have a nuclear reactor. 
Uh, gel sacks and rubies. Now, where gel sacks and rubies are is completely fucking unknown to me. I'm gonna have to go searching for some diamonds. I think I'm gonna have to go, like, deeper down into this area here to maybe find some. Um, gel sacks are apparently all around the twisty bridges. So I can just see them, like, lying around here in places. Um, this way is better. But rubies, I don't know. Rubies, I think, are down much deeper. I think I'm gonna need some upgrades. So that's why I want to find diamonds so I can get the enamel glass to get the depth upgrade for this. Because then we can go to the mining site. Which was next to where the pilot was known. I think that's where the pilot's last location, location leads to. Remember there was like a big mining site down near that? Uh, did I not get these? Some water. That was first aid. Nice. Beacon fragment. I mean... I have beacons. What's this over here? Ah, God, Jesus, stop Warning. bouncing into everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know, I know. Ooh. Yeah, we haven't found any of these rooms yet. Shit. Warning. Passing 100 meters. Oxygen efficiency decreased. Oh, I can't even scan it. These are flashing over here, though. Oh? Epic precursor site, maybe? Oh, we have to be getting close to something. Yeah, baby! Passing 200 meters. Oxygen efficiency. Hello? Is someone there? Alan! I forgot that he was so close by. I can help you better if you show yourself. If we could show ourselves, we would not need storage. <laughs> you mean you don't have a physical presence? Are you one of them? An architect? Storage medium identified. We will be lost unless we find a new host. Can you help? Can you use my PDA for storage? You are not with the group from before. Your cybernetic components failed their signal. Altera? No, my equipment is, uh, borrowed. It will have to do. Yeah! See, this is the stuff I love. When you start getting Alan and he gets inside your head, now I have to make Alan? I'm curious how this- I'm glad the story is still in it, because this was my favorite part of Below Zero before. So I'm super curious to see how this all gets resolved. How long have you been stored here? Longer than you. Warning. Sanctuary power. Critical. Our data can be downloaded from the terminal. We may speak more once the transfer is complete. Yes, okay. Hurry. Oh. There you go. Storage medium accepted. Place Chester. Hell yeah! Ah. I'm the storage ah. medium! What's happening? Chester. Ah. Oh. Nice. Now superpowers. Chester complete. Oh. How do you feel? Why do you sound like you're inside my head? The facility identified hospitable capacity within your cerebral cortex. You are in my head? I offered you my PDA! Get out! Oh no. Does your kind perceive a boundary between cybernetic and organic components? Oh, cool. My mind is not a component! You sound angry. We will allow you a moment to process. Don't you go silent on me. Hello? Xenobiology. This is not happening. Damn! That's the explanation. It's not happening. Nice! Alan's in my head again! I missed Alan! He was super cool! Architect Containment Cube. 
so awesome looking. While advanced human civilization has attempted for centuries to develop successful whole brain emulation techniques, it appears that the architect race has built a platform for accomplishing this holy grail of life extension technology. Physically, the containment cube appears to be comprised of a redundant array of quantum holographic storage layers supporting a hyperdense capacity of 35 bits per electron. I was going to say, um, but I thought I'd read it first. The energy field that feeds a, s a suspended animated cube also serves to power the operating software, allowing the intelligent in intelligence and storage to maintain consciousness throughout the storage period. Once a storage consciousness has been transferred out of the cube, the component parts will become inert. Without witnessing, without witnessing and carefully observing the backup process, it is difficult to ascertain how the transfer works and whether or not the process is truly lossless. Interesting. So now, Alan's in my head, and I have to create a new body for him. At least that was the story in Subnautica before. So I'm assuming it's pretty similar. Yay, I'm glad we did that. I was worried that wasn't going to be in the game. Um, and how it was actually going to get me to this point, because it wasn't pointing me in this direction. Oh god. <laughs> 